from now onwards, I'm going to be mixing on Luna because it's simply better. I got to tell you that straight because it's super, super efficient. The tape emulation, the integration with certain uh, universal audio plugins, the fantastic integration with my uh, beloved SSL uh, control surfaces is just insane. It's really, really good. Hello there, girls and boys, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you what I think about Luna, a fantastic digital audio workstation developed by the one and only Universal Audio. And as you might have guessed, Universal Loud is one of the big names in the business, not only because of how great their plugins are, but also their incredible heritage when it comes to analog gear. I happen to own a few of their pieces and I gotta say that they are fantastic. And just as a little bit of trivia, uh, the first actual great piece of gear that I ever bought with my own money after spending blood tears and fears <laughs> in this business was a Universal Audio piece, the one that you have on your screen. Now, girls and boys, I'm going to introduce you to this DAW. Just from the get-go, I will tell you that it is a fantastic digital audio workstation, and the best part is that you can get it for free, believe it or not. And it's not just a demo version, it's actually the fully featured piece of software that you can actually download for free and use it to your heart content. Only one thing, exclusive to the Mac. Sorry, Windows users. With that being said, let's get into it. But just as a quick reminder, what you're about to see is an excerpt from an actual live stream on which you can see me mixing a song from start to finish using Luna. So after this, this video is over, please go straight to wherever the link is somewhere on the screen so you can watch the entirety of that live stream so you can get the best out of the information contained in this video. So here we go. This is Luna. And you might be wondering, what on earth is this? This looks kind of uh, empty. It is empty at this point because it's by design. Let me show you first a quick rundown of how this thing works. If you're familiar with something like Pro Tools, Logic, Cubase, uh, basically a freaking out digital workstation, you will be familiar with a console-like uh, uh, setting, setup, but also this, the traditional editing screen. And this is a quite uh, similar, if not totally not totally not ripping off uh, Pro Tools <laughs> uh, kind of layout because it's extremely similar to Pro Tools. Uh, but it has many, many things that, are, that makes it not unique, but I like a lot. This is extremely similar to Logic. For example, this is our information uh, bar. This is where we can see all sorts of extra uh, bells and whistles, including the tempo. We can assign different time signature changes. And of course, uh, the tempo of the track can change progressively speaking throughout time. We're also going to be able to drop our markers as usual. So nothing super groundbreaking here. Okay. Very, very basic uh, uh, V stuff. Over here, we got something that is extremely similar to Logic, which is the display of the channel that we got selected. And if you're eagle-eyed, as I know you are, you're already seeing some interesting uh, things as part of our channel strips. This is taking us to the mixing window once again. The mixing environment in Luna is quite, quite well developed. And I gotta say that I love it because it's quite reminiscent to the workflow of what you would be doing if you were working on a mixing desk. So that's super cool. Also, the implementation of the built-in plugins, more on that later, it's just insane. Over here in the mixing window, we got uh, the different areas on which you, we can turn on and off the amount of information displayed to us. By default, or not by default, because this is actually my own decision, I decided just to begin by showing you the inputs. And in here, you can see that we got the channels here, and we can tell which input of our interface we're gonna use to fit that channel width. But you can tell that there is a difference here. So over here, we got sum in and input. Why, why do we got that? Luna, uh, has something quite similar to Harrison Mixbus, which is some form of console-like uh, emulation workflow already built in into the software. So uh, the idea is that you will be able to actually have some form of uh, saturation and even a little bit of uh, compression and stuff like that, and even the non-linearity of the summing capabilities of uh, 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 an analog rig. How close to reality that is? Well. Uh, it's far from being exactly the same as what happens when you are summing your stuff uh, outside of the box, but it's extremely, 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 extremely superior to just uh, running your channels uh, dry. 
that's why you see me always working with emulations of channel strips and stuff like that because I like that sound. The reason why an analog like workflow is so important to me is because uh, music it's an organic affair and analog for as much as we like to pretend that it's just a, a set of circuits and wires and electricity has some form of life to it. Don't know how to describe it, but as soon as you play around with an analog synthesizer or you work with a guitar amplifier of, a, of good reputation, you know what I mean. There is something about it. And it is, in my opinion, based on the fact that it reacts organically to the way that you are performing or the way that the music is going through it. And having an analog, analog workflow is always a welcome because of that very reason. Once again, coming back to, to the, the layout, we got then the second option here, utility. And as you can see, we can even hide the amount of information displayed on all of those different brackets. And you can tell here that this is very simple, but this is fantastic. It has a trimming knob, of course. We can flip the, 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 the what's the name of it? You know the, the polarity. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> we can flip the polarity. Uh, even though this is stereo box, we can flip the polarity of them and the same happens to our uh, individual channel strips. Also, we got here, and this is what I love uh, so much about this, we can delay the signal. What does that mean? If we have some issues with phase a correlation that are not fixed by flipping the polarity of our track, we can make it slower, we can delay slightly that signal. We're talking about milliseconds which will fix those issues. It's excellent. And this is built in with the software. It's badass. Something that I forgot to mention. The difference between this channel strip and this other channel strip is that this one is a track and this is a summing bus. Okay? That's why you have the summing emulation. And this thing has two different, as you can see, I haven't bought this one, <laughs> the NIV <laughs> summing. Why? Because I'm going to stick to the API for now. Oh, by the way, this, I, I mentioned that the software is is available for free, but you can uh, buy uh, expansions to it. Next next stage, it's tape. And yes, if you're familiar with McCarson Mixbus, we got tape emulation of every single one of our channel strips. Coming back to the analog thing, the tape emulations on Luna are just insane. They are coming from the huge catalog of emulation software developed by Universal Audio, and they come in the form of Oxide and the Stutter uh, and the Ampeg uh, recreations of the tape machines of years old. And they are simply amazing. And the way that you can control them is quite, quite cool inside of Luna because uh, you are going to assign, uh, you have up to four channels or up to four tape machines, if I am correct. And uh, that means that you will have to decide what kind of instruments or which tracks are going to go to each of those four uh, tape machines. The thing is that if you decide to change one of the parameters of the given tape machine, all of the instruments being fed to that one are going to be affected by it. It makes sense because it's, once again, quite reminiscent to what would happen if you were working uh, on the, in the analog realm. But also, don't think that it's just confined to that. There are certain parameters, depending on the tape machine, of the tape machine that you're working with, that can be tinkered on an individual basis. If you click here, you can see that we got here our parameters of the uh, particular uh, um, mix, not the, uh, what's the name of it, uh, tape uh, device that we're using. But if we click here, we can see that we can switch between two different devices. But also, we can actually address each of those in uh, inserts of our uh, uh, tape emulation individually from each other. Some of those elements, not everything. And if we go here, if I change any of the parameters here, it will affect the entirety of the channels that are being uh, affected by this tape emulation. By the way, girls and boys, if you happen to like this video, please let us know by clicking on the like button underneath. Let's continue. The next stage, which is console. And I'm gonna shrink down this guy, shrink down this, shrink, shrink down this guy, and look at that. What are this console? This is, if you're familiar with Harrison Mixbus, which I know some of you are, it's basically what Harrison Mixbus does. You can insert an API console per track. Now Luna, as I mentioned before, has a great integration with certain plugins. Those plugins are, of course, developed by Universal Audio, and just by the name alone, you can know already that they are fantastic. And they come in two flavors. 
you got an API-based console-like compressor and also an API-based console-like channel strip, which are fully integrated to the workflow in Luna. I can fill the entire mix with uh, API channel strips, turning the whole thing into an API console. Badass, right? Built in. We don't have to open plugins because that's actually what you can see here. Look, eh? Eh? In, 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 in the input, which would be the game staging, dynamics, which, would, with his, which is displaying the controls of the, to set the sun and also <laughs> to set the, 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 the gate and the compressor, and of course, the fantastic emulation of the API EQ based. Next one, inserts, which is, of course, our plugins. Since this is <laughs> yeah good <laughs> get it together yes <laughs> it's way too early to to, to drop the the, the, the the goods now this is the the sense uh as you might have guessed is what what are we going to be doing with our uh bosses and stuff this is very badass because you can tell that we got here very traditionally speaking my sense to my drum bus my my main drum bus which is this bad boy but also what the hell is that multiple what if I tell you that in Luna, you can assign one knob, one cent to fit all of the uh, stereo, external bosses you got? Exactly. It is that good, and it's quite easy to do. Once again, it's harkening back to the workflow of using a patch bay. Let me introduce you to the next section of our uh, setup. This is as a SL360, you know that I love my SSL stuff. You have seen me using this bad boy several more times than I would like to admit. The thing is this. Luna, it's a super, super uh, recent and extremely modern uh, digital audio orchestration. That means that the protocols used for communication with ex external uh, controllers such as these guys are way more advanced than those found on Logic uh, Pro Tools and even Harrison mix was itself. Uh, the integration with SSL, uh, it's fantastic because look at this. You can tell that my colors, my, uh, my channel strips over here are actually mimicking the colors of my session. Something that no other uh, digital orchestration that I have access to on my system is capable of. Excellent. That's thing number one. Thing number two, if I click here, look at this. I can control the sense of my uh, uh, channels with the SSL itself yeah. and including the faders could be used for such a thing. No more fumbling around. So good, so freaking good. And I can go one all the way down to eight because uh, Luna has up to eight cents. So I just have to click on any of those, you know, these bad boys here and I would be controlling that particular scent. <laughs> Thing number three. We can see that we got this. Do. What does that mean? Look at this. Click it on Do. You saw that those guys automatically switch positions. Okay. If I go back to plugin, I will be controlling the channel strips, the plugins, okay? The, gain, the, the faders of this. Let me show you. The native, you know, this guy. You have seen me using it before. And by controlling, as it is right now, I am controlling that fader. Let me see which one is this. This is the organ. Let's go straight. I'm going to select the kick drum. I'm going to re remove this bad boy here. Now we got the kick here. This is the kick, okay? See what happens if I move this fader? Eh, it's controlling that fader. Excellent. But if I go back to 360 and click on DAW, coming back to uh, Luna, See what happens. I'm going to open uh, this bad boy here, the plugin. Pay attention to the fader. What? You're doing nothing. No, I am. But I'm not controlling the plugin anymore. What are you controlling? The fader on Luna. And I am using the 360 control. And also, look at this. Auto zero. Wow, how beautiful is that? Now you're wondering what's the whole point of that? And I can tell you right away. With this, I can finally control the entirety of my mix just using the SSL environment. Without the need of having a, 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 a layer controlling Luna. 
So there you have it, girls and boys. I gotta tell you that Luna is simply fantastic. And you know me being a huge fanboy of Logic Pro X. And no, this is not gonna swap me or take me away from my beloved Logic. But I will tell you this. I think that from now onwards, I'm gonna be mixing on Luna because it's simply better. I gotta tell you that straight. Because it's super, super efficient. The tape emulation, the integration with certain uh, Universal Audio plugins, the fantastic integration with my uh, beloved SSL uh, control surfaces is just insane. It's really, really good. And if you want to see the entirety of my fanboying uh, around Luna uh, at full display, watch the live stream that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, because in that one I explained my entire workflow. And actually, there is yet another live stream in which you can see me mixing a song from start to finish using Luna. So don't miss the chance to see Luna in action. Now, girls and boys, as everything to meet you, if you happen to like this kind of content, the best way to support this channel is by simply following us, not just here on YouTube, but also on Instagram and X, also known as Twitter, yeah, because that's the best way for you to get in touch with us in a much more personal basis. Now, if you want to support the channel even further, the best way to do it is by listening to music on Apple Music or Spotify. Now, girls and boys, the only thing left to be said is, as everything to meet you, I gotta remind you that you should never let anybody tell you what to dream about. And remember that I will see you when I see you.